blessed Thursday morning, my brothers and sisters of Christ. Again, thankful to God to come together with you today and just blessed to have you all uh, around the table of God's Word as we share the Word of God out together. And today, the thought for the day went through the book of Acts chapter 5. When it came to verse 14, it says that more and more people were being added unto salvation, unto the Lord. And this came right after the story of Ananias and Sapphira, um, a husband and wife who lied against the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 3, uh, Acts chapter 5 verse 3 tells us that. And in Acts chapter 5 verse 4 says that they lied against the Lord God. And this is a reminder of the Trinity, the doctrine of the Trinity, that the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Godhead. And th when they lied, both of them, against the Lord, verse 5, verse 11 tells us that fear came upon the church. And I wanted to speak about fear. I believe that many were coming to the Lord because they were fearing God. Now you might say, well, doesn't it say in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, that God didn't give us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind? And doesn't it say in 1 John chapter 4, verse 18, that perfect love drives out all fear? Well, that's talking about the fear of condemnation and wrath, the wrath of God. And we are not appointed to wrath. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 9 reminds us of that. We are not condemned as the world is because we're in Christ Jesus. Romans chapter 8, verse 1 tells us there's no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. So when it speaks about we don't have to have fear and that perfect love drives out fear, it's the fear of judgment and the wrath of God that's to come. We're covered by the blood of Christ. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7 reminds us we're redeemed by the blood of Christ. But there is a godly, holy fear. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 7. And where is this wisdom found? It's found in fearing God in the sense that we do not want to sin against him. In Exodus chapter 20, we have the uh, Ten Commandments given by God. And right after the Ten Commandments are given, Exodus chapter 20, verse 20 tells us that we have the fear of God in us so that we will stay away from sin. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 13 reminds us that the fear of God causes us to stay away from sin. You see, my friends, that's the fear of God we should have. When catastrophes have happened, like what happened to Ananias and Sapphira, fear came upon the people. I remember when 9-11 occurred, September 11, 2001, and many people had fear and they were running to church. Well, sometimes some people will come to God and church for the wrong reasons, but at least they were going to church. Now, 22 years later, sadly here in America, whenever there's a catastrophe, there's no fear of God. There's no reverence for going to church anymore as there was before because the fear of God is not in the land here in America. And that is why we are to learn from experience in life history. Uh, history. In Leviticus chapter 10, verses 1 to 3, you could read of Aaron. He was a high priest and he had two sons, Nadab and Abihu. And they were struck down and killed because... They profaned the worship of God in just the slightest little way. Why was this? It looks like it's very harsh, but we have to remember that God is holy. He cannot be, be approached, and the only way we can approach him is the way God has ordained. I mean, we take for granted, I know I have many times in my Christian life, the sacrifice of Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross for me. It is only because of what Christ did that I am not struck down right away. James chapter 2 verse 10 tells us that if we break one letter of the law, we're guilty of them all. We're, we are all sinners the moment we're conceived. Uh, we like to think of little children as little angels. And you often hear me remind us the old Puritans and reformers used to call babies vipers and diapers. And if you read... Psalm 51 verse 5 and Psalm 58 verse 3 basically tells us that we were conceived in sin. The, the wicked go astray from the womb. The wicked don't go astray when they become an age of accountability. And that's a teaching that's sometimes taught. And 
According to the Bible, we are all sinners from the moment we're conceived and we go out of the womb of our mothers already uh, astray. But it is by the grace and mercy of God that God keeps us and preserves us. It is by the grace and mercy of God that we come to faith in Christ and this should give us a reverential fear and awe of God. Philippians chapter 2 verses 12 and 13 reminds us that we are to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. Isaiah chapter 66 verse 2 tells us that God is close to those who tremble at his word. Hebrews chapter 12 verses 28 and 29 reminds us that we are to worship God with reverential fear and awe, respect. My friends, that is one of the reasons why I believe that there's not much revival in America today because there's no fear of God. There's no turning away from sin. And a lot of times, even in the pulpits in America, you hear of these preachers and they talk about the love of God. They talk about how God wants you to be uh, with that new BMW. God wants you to have that vacation trip to the Bahamas. God wants you to be healthy. Well, I don't know what God's will is for you in your individualistic life, but according to the Bible, we are to come to God, not with a grocery list of things we want him to do for us, but with reverential fear and awe. Fear for came upon the church. And a little bit later in the book of Acts, Acts chapter 5, verse 29, when the apostles were being persecuted for their faith, Peter said, we, it is better for us to obey God than man. That's another way we learn to fear God. We want to meet respect and obey him and not worry about people. We're not to be people pleasers. My brothers and sisters, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ himself reminds us in Matthew chapter 10, verse 28, that we are to fear the one who could put us in hell, destroy the body and soul into hell. We're not to fear people. We respect authority. Romans chapter 13, verses 1 to 7 reminds us, we respect those who are in authority here on earth. We don't fear them. We ought to only fear God. And when we fear God, truly, biblically, we will learn to stay away from sin. In my own life, there are things that I sometimes struggle with watching and looking at. I go to work. Uh, there's things I hear. There's things uh, in my mind sometimes. But what really keeps me from sinning a lot is I fear God. When I was a kid, I remember if I did something wrong, my mother would say, wait till your father got home. And that reminded me that there was going to be consequences. Even though my father loved me and he might have punished me, he did it so that to keep me away from sin. I hope today's devotional video, my friends, will be a good reminder for us all that although there's no condemnation for us in Christ Jesus, when we do sin, there are consequences and God will discipline us. Read Hebrews chapter 12, verses 5 to 11 when you have time. Just like an earthly parent, if they love their child, will discipline them. And that's one of the reasons why so many kids are astray today is because too many parents want to be their kid's buddy instead of their parent. And we need to remember that God is not our buddy. God is our Heavenly Father, deserving of all our worship and awe and respect. Heavenly Father, Lord God, I thank you for my brothers and sisters in Christ who will see this devotional video today. Humble us, Lord God, humble me as we obey you with reverential fear, respect, and awe. In Jesus' name I pray. God bless you all.